Hi everyone, Sean here from Attack Panic and welcome to listen to your current attitude. So let's recap on your current attitude towards your anxiety and panic and what you are doing in order to protect yourself. You may find you are practicing one of these actions or only a few. It makes no difference to the fact that you have an anxiety condition or how fast you will heal yourself. Staying constantly on guard, monitoring and measuring your anxious sensations. Preoccupied with what if or other worrying thoughts about a potential distressing situation. Anticipatory anxiety. Replaying memories of past situations in which you panicked or had difficulty. Using safety crutches such as cell phones, a support person or a bottle of medication on hand to help you cope through a situation. Restricting your life to avoid anxiety provoking situations. Refraining from doing things that used to be fun but you now find too difficult to face. Using coping strategies to cope with your anxiety or panic. This could be using safety crutches as outlined above. Making sure that you have a suitable exit mapped out. Therapy or counselling sessions. Having a raft of reasons to excuse yourself if the sensations become too overwhelming. The more severe coping strategies include taking medication or confining yourself to your home like I did. The ultimate avoidance strategy of them all. Now all this vigilance, anticipation, running, fighting and guarding against seems perfectly natural and intuitive things to do. I agree, this is the very attitude that I practiced for many years, thinking that I was doing the right thing and that it was the best way to protect myself. But this attitude is based on resistance, fighting against what you don't want. It is based on fear. What you resist persists. Your fear is breeding more fear. Your subconscious anxious behavior, or if you want to look at it how I did, the record that's playing in the background, is not the problem. It is your conscious fear-based attitude that's the problem. Fear creates more anxiety. Fear is the fuel for panic. If you keep doing what you have always done, you will keep getting what you have always got. If you continue with this current attitude, expect more of the same. Coping strategies, for example, further convinces the subconscious mind that you are using these coping strategies because you are in fear, in danger, and therefore you need protection against that fear. The subconscious mind has no idea what is real and what is not, and it certainly cannot take a joke. What would happen if you chose an attitude completely opposite to the one you are currently holding on to? What if you did the complete opposite to everything you are currently doing as described above? What if you chose an attitude of fearlessness instead of fearfulness? You must get a different result. I know what you are thinking. What? Are you completely nuts? You expect me to walk into panic, go looking for situations that cause me distress? You expect me to drop all the things that I need to keep me safe? You expect me to just stop worrying about my anxiety and to just stop monitoring my horrible sensations? Really? My answer is pretty simple. Really. This approach seems ludicrous as it appears counterintuitive to what you should do. This approach is known as paradoxical intention and involves completely dropping your guard, embracing your fears, walking into them and wanting more and accepting them and flowing with them. I bet you're now thinking, that's crazy. It's just not that simple. I can't just let go of all my fears and safety nets. It's just not that easy. My answer to that is, have you tried it? I can, however, understand your initial concerns. I had them too when I first changed my attitude. It may or may not be easy for you, and this will depend on your level of acceptance and belief in what I am teaching you. This paradoxical approach may seem scary and may or may not be easy, but how badly do you want to end your suffering? 
Are you willing to practice and persevere with this new attitude? Are you willing to do whatever it takes to heal yourself? Your commitment, your resistance to fight or avoid your discomfort actually causes your continued problem with panic. The single most important way to win over panic attacks is to change your attitude towards the panic. You focus in on the horrible sensations. Your attention and preoccupation is on these sensations and you invest all your energy trying to stop them from appearing, worrying about what if these sensations turn up out of the blue. Your corresponding actions and behaviour are focused on avoiding the situation that provokes these sensations. Now if you were anything like me, how I used to be, you probably spend a good deal of your time trying to figure out why these sensations of fear appear out of nowhere and what you have done to deserve this. You may even feel helpless that you can't consciously turn off these sensations when they arrive. You are fully aware that this fear towards the sensations is irrational and ridiculous. But you are so frustrated because as much as you try to turn off the anxious response or panic attacks, they just seem to come on even stronger. You try all your coping strategies, techniques and safety crutches to control these uncomfortable yet harmless sensations, throwing all your attention and energy into avoiding, running and resisting. The harder you try, the worse they seem to get and the more frustrated and out of control you feel. Once something has already happened, you can't turn around and stop it. It's too late. It's like shutting the gate after the horse has bolted. You can't stop a panic attack after it has started. You can't stop the initial anxious sensations arising as a result of a pattern of habitual behaviour after they have arrived. But that doesn't stop you from trying to stop the horrible sensations, does it? Your resistant attitude will never reverse the sensations. You will never stop them, but it will fuel them and make them worse. The good news is you don't have to stop them, ever. You will learn that with a non-resistant, accepting and fearless attitude, it makes no difference whether the sensations are there or not. You will learn, if you haven't already, that the sensations of panic are the same sensations experienced when you are excited or when you have had a cup of coffee. The difference is your interpretation, the meaning you choose to give them. You will learn to let them come if or when they come and let them go when they go without any fuss or attachment from your conscious mind. You will learn not to fear these harmless sensations.